good afternoon, good morning, good evening, uh, depending where you are. I would like to welcome you to the webinar Blockchain. Uh, today, the title of the webinar is Want to know how to use blockchain and why you as an organization should use it? So bear with us to hear everything regarding to the subject. But before we start, important notes. You are going to be on mute during the whole session, okay? But this doesn't mean that you cannot send your questions. You can send your questions at any time by using the GoToWebinar tab called Questions. You can see these on the right side of your screen. And all your questions are going to be addressed in the questions and answers session. So bear with us up to the end of the session that we are going to address your questions. And aside from the questions, we have a special surprise prepared for you as well. So bear with us. In case you are facing any technical issue, please go to the GoToWebinar uh, web page for support. Unfortunately, we cannot provide you support along with the webinar. Uh, before we start, I would like to drag your attention to the Exim portfolio. This is the overall vision that we have, that the Exim portfolio is divided by domains. The, the first one is called Security Compliance and Risk and has many different programs regarding to the team, like privacy and data protection, information security management, uh, business continuity management, ITSM, and so on. But then later we have the Agile principles and culture, that we have Agile Scrum, Verizon, DevOps, and the tech and mobile and saveness domain that we have blockchain, of course, artificial intelligence, and many more. On the business intelligence and processes, we have the SIAM program, we have BA program, and also big data. Today, we're going to focus on the domain tech and mobile and saveness with the program blockchain. The blockchain program uh, is composed by two different certifications. The first of that, uh, the first certification is the Axing Blockchain Essentials. That is, uh, uh, it was designed uh, for those that would like to have a glimpse about how blockchain works and the value that it can add to organizations and also for yourself as a, a person and a citizen in the world. And the second one is the Axing Blockchain Foundation that goes above and beyond the level of the essentials with more techniques regarding to the blockchain. So if you are interested in these certifications, please consult exin.com web page. Also, blockchain is part of what we call uh, career path certifications. The career path certifications, they were designed for those candidates and professions that would like to exceed uh, in their uh, activities and also pursue uh, new roles, uh, their career path. And then a blockchain is part of the Exim Digital Transformation Officer Certification that is composed by, of course, Blockchain Foundation, AI uh, Foundation, Cloud Computing Foundation, and Verizon Professional. So if you'd like to understand about this career path certification and other more, please consult exim.com slash career path. Then you are going to see more details about these certifications. But no further ado anymore. Today we are with Apple Lucas. Apple is a consultant and a trainer with more than 35 years of experience in IT and also IT related subjects. Because nowadays we know that IT is above and beyond the limits of IT itself. Um, he has like a um, bottom line that is called how IT can work for you. This has been like a, his main subject along these years and with you apple please be welcome for the webinar and of course if you'd like to add more words for your presentation please do so thank you very much to be with us apple yes i'm here oh okay you can go you um i i need to see your um your screen. Ah, there it is. So, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. 
around the world. I hope you can hear me. Um, my name is uh, Epo Lupus, and uh, Adamar, thank you for kindly introducing me. And I'm going to lead you through the um, blockchain uh, foundation. Uh, however, for those who are expecting a, a technical presentation, this is not going to be a technical presentation. It's, it's more about how blockchain can help you to do your, uh, to do your business. Um, I welcome you from uh, beautiful Amsterdam. And I hope you are all safe in this per difficult period that we are encountering at this moment with the COVID. And um, uh, let's let's go ahead with the presentation. Yeah, first of all, um, Adama did the welcome and an introduction. And my presentation will last about, let's say, 16:40 or 70:40. I, I must uh, I must say, uh, in some cases. Um, and um, we will uh, talk about what is trust, what is a blockchain, why blockchain, and um, at the main and at the end of the year presentation, we will have some interesting use cases. And you will probably the same with me. You will be astounded how many use cases um, we currently have. Maybe you remember a, a guy called Henry Ford. Uh, who said in the years and years and years ago, uh, if you always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always got. And that's a little bit of the things that encountered, I encountered when I got to hear for the first time about blockchain, blockchain some six, seven years ago. It was about the a reaction that I had, okay, I've done all my IT and IT related stuff in a certain way. And um, now suddenly there's something called blockchain. And what does it give in, in added value? And what is it? And what can I do with it? Uh, is it a new technology? What, what, what can, I, uh, can I do? And it was until a couple of years ago when a friend of mine who works at a legal company here in Amsterdam said to me, Epo, you are in IT, aren't you? And I said, yes, about 30, 35 years. So I know a little bit about IT. He said, yeah, we are a legal company and we are looking into blockchain. And I said, huh? looking into blockchain? What do you want with blockchain? Blockchain is for techies. Blockchain is is something that is very, very difficult to understand. And there's only a limited, limited amount of so-called use cases that you, uh, that, that you can uh, think of. And mainly, probably also with, with you, cryptocurrencies and, and et cetera are the main uh, things that we currently associate with blockchain. And he said, well, Epo, we are looking into smart contracts. So um, smart contracts based on blockchain. And as a person who is very curious, and I like to think outside of the box, I started reading and I started reading a few books um, that are um, very interesting to, uh, to see how blockchain evolved uh, over the last couple of years. And as going through these books, I thought, yeah, yeah Epo, you are maybe one of these, these elephants over here that think that, you think that the status quo is like, in this case, the elephant on the rope. However, thinking outside of the box uh, gave me new insights. And starting with my journey, let's say three years ago with this friend from the legal company, I now am talking to you uh, and I have, have developed the training that was just introduced by uh, Adamar. So it, it, the journey itself can bring you to, to some interesting uh, insights. So basically, um, when we're talking about blockchain, 
we talk about trust. And the, the question really is, what is trust? Well, in normal English, one could say trust is a firm belief in the reliability, truths, or ability of someone or something. The belief that something is true or correct or that you can rely on it. So when you are in your personal life or in your in your in, in your business, uh, trust is uh, like that you can rely on the information that you are you are getting. Trust in business is the expectation that the other party will behave according to four principles of integrity. These have been coined by um, the authors of the Naked Corporation, Don Tapscott and David uh, Tickle, who wrote that trust in business uh, is honesty, uh, honesty to establish trusting relationships with employees, partners, shareholders, and the, and the public, that it's the other principle is consideration. Be genuine uh, in respect and desires or feelings of others and other parties as well. Accountability is take uh, your the accountability uh, them in terms of uh, 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 being uh, committed and uh, showing commitment and own your problems or own your accountability and transparency it, it is a, a way that uh, we are talking about things as uh, active openness uh, in in sharing information well when when there is absence of trust we try to control to mitigate we try to repair so when you look at blockchain, uh, blockchain will, uh, as I will sh show later on, blockchain will change a lot in terms of trust, but also in terms of how we're doing business. So when we look at the, the past, or when we look at the recent past, we we tend to control things. We, we tend to repair things that are not in the way that we want them. So when something is broken, we repair. People are very good. The human race is very good at repairing things. So thinking outside of the box may be a little bit uh, difficult for some people, but maybe uh, just repairing or controlling it is the way that we uh, actually do. Usually at a um, at a, a great great cost. So when there is when people are doing business with each other, one thing that we do is we we set up a contract between the two parties. We set up a legal binding. SLA or we set up uh, some contract or whatsoever. The fact of creating the SLA or creating a control mechanism is usually very difficult. When we look at things like security, we tend to create a lot of controls inside uh, our IT systems uh, because we do not, let's say, really trust anybody. I just just heard about um, the um, some hacks of the WhatsApp pages of, of some uh, well-known people. So the login of uh, of a application, we tend to control that via systems like passwords, etc., and so forth. So if that's not the way that we uh, are doing, we tend to control or to mitigate or to repair, usually at a high financial cost, but often also at a personal cost. So basically, when, when I read my, my literature, and I believe 
I can tell you it has been a very extensive literature study. I noticed a few things that um, I would like to share with you. The director of MIT lab said, the blockchain is to trust as the internet is to information. Like the original internet, blockchain has the potential to transform everything. Well, Adamar introduced me and said, well, you are, um, I am 35 plus years in IT. So the beginning of the internet, maybe some of you as well, um, I have seen the internet coming. And my first reaction to the internet was, okay, this is something that is for techies. This is something that only has limited potential for transforming uh, a business. How wrong I was. So um, basically, um, internet has changed a lot of things. And when you are about my age, or I, I hope you're a little bit younger, you may re recollect and remember the early years of the internet. And now I'm talking to you, you everywhere in the world probably, I'm talking to you through the internet and we can communicate and we can do a lot of things using the internet. So the internet has changed doing business and doing a lot of um, uh, uh, good things. Having said that, when something new is there, there is also and always also people who use the technology or they use the platform for not so nice things. There are good guys and there are bad guys. So like with the internet and like with blockchain, there are good things and there are bad things. So we all know about the bad things of internet. And I'm not going to sh tell you that blockchain is uh, heaven on earth. Um, it has its uh, pitfalls, but I'm like to focus today on let's say some main use cases that uh, are beneficial to for you as a uh, as a worker or as an organization. Another book that I would like to. Um, uh, recommend to you or a person is Klaus Schwab, uh, a Swiss of nature, and he is the director of the World Economic Forum. And he wrote a book together with his, uh, his group of researchers called The Fourth Industrial Revolution. And part of the Fourth Industrial Revolution is currently the situation that we are in now uh, in terms of uh, internet, internet of things, um, new um, digital transformation uh, and etc. and so forth. And he, in this book, he wrote that blockchain is going to be um, very important, let's say three quarters of the, the organizations think that blockchain creates opportunities and challenges for countries in terms of um, a, a, a government uh, uh, um, government government uh, things like a central bank, like uh, um, municipalities, like government, etc., and so forth. He also wrote in his book, we are at the beginning of a revolution that is fundamentally changing the way we live and work. It is unlike anything humankind has experienced before. And, and these are very um, harsh, very impacted statements. Um, and I believe that blockchain is uh, possibly doing um, changing the world already, and it has already started 
in terms of uh, uh, accepting and ex uh, accessing some momentum. Just now, I, I read this morning that uh, Beijing uh, in China has um, announced a two-year plan of making the city a global hub for blockchain development. And I would like to, to take you a little bit further uh, and hopefully you are a bit curious when you when we um, when we finalize this uh, this this presentation to look into what blockchain can really mean to you so what is really blockchain well blockchain is about um, a, a system is about a peer-to-peer -peer network of distributed data and distributed databases and satoshi nakamoto wrote a paper in uh, i think it was 1998 uh, about bitcoin a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system blockchain is the let's say the underlying technology of of many cryptocurrencies and in and, and of course in this case uh, bitcoin and i wrote a question mark at his name satoshi uh, because nobody actually knows who he is some people claim to be uh, satoshi however um, it, it could could be a person it could be it, it could be a group of persons it could be nobody knows it's like the artist banksy nobody knows who really who it really is in this um, this document and later um later documents um the, se um the seven design principles were written and basically i'm going to, to go them through with with you um blockchain technology um the network is a um a, a very um, important uh, part of the blockchain. Uh, currently, uh, instead of, uh, contrary to years and uh, uh, two decades ago, everybody is networked. So basically what we can do right now is because there is a huge worldwide network uh, called the internet. The network integrity is Im immutable meaning you cannot change. Uh, because the blockchain is spread out over thousands of computers, it is networked as such, and all participants in the blockchain economy are incentivized to maintain the integrity. The in network integrity makes it possible to distribute power. So no, no single person or organization has outside control over the whole or access to an outsized amount of data. So what we're talking about is a huge network of computers who are, net, these computers are owned by individual people or organizations, and these organizations are considered or make the blockchain and they they have in these organizations have power by the, the number of people who are part of the organization so the power to decide on things is not to one person or to one organization it is to a group of organizations so it, as is it is a self-controlled value as incentive meaning all stakeholders have aligned incentives. They, they are working on keeping the network alive. And they are they part of the network. They, 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 the value that the network brings them is an incentive to keep them alive. Four, so security, which is a very, very important thing. And, and Blockchain is almost by default secure. Uh, there are some things, as I said earlier, um, 
that you can temper the blockchain as well. However, it is very, very difficult. Because of the distributed nature of blockchain technology, there is no central point of failure. Reckless behavior on one person is limited to damage for that person only. So security is in, inherent. So it's, it uses a very powerful public key infrastructure um, to, um, to secure the, secu to, the, the security. Privacy. Um, blockchain is by definition uh, um, uh, in the hands of the person itself. People get to be in control of their own data. So think of your privacy, or privacy as they say in some other countries, think of your privacy in terms of who can access my data and what is my identity on uh, on the um, on, on the internet or on the in IT rights preserved uh, number six rights and freedoms are clear and enforceable as they become parts of um, of the blockchain so the blockchain uh, the earlier spoken um, thing as a smart contract um, means that rights are preserved in the blockchain itself. And inclusion, everybody, everybody can take part of the, uh, of the blockchain. I will show later on an example of that. So what is the blockchain? This is the definition I've taken from the book that we use as part of the uh, training, right? the book of Jana Lawrence. A blockchain is a distributed timestamp server that holds a record of all transactions that have ever occurred on that network. Blockchain records are secure transactions in blocks that are chained together. Once entries have been recorded in a block and chained, chained to the previous block, they are secured against changes via a so-called consensus mechanism. And the consensus is what you agree among people in, in the blockchain itself. So a blockchain, you can call it, a blockchain is a secured, shared, distributed ledger. A distributed ledger means uh, it uses, it, it, it is a secure distributed ledger. Secure means it uses a strong cryptography to create transactions. And uh, that are uh, impervious to fraud and establish a shared truth. truth. Blockchain shared. Blockchain value is directly numbered to the no number of organizations that, that participate in them. If I agree something to Ademar at this, at this moment, and you are with a number of people, you are watching me or listening me, this means that I have an agreement with Ademar, but you are a witness to that agreement. So there are now maybe 100, 200 people in this call. If one person says in, of, of them, I don't remember that Epo and Ademar have a, 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 uh, a, a agreement, the other nine, 99 will say, yes, there is something. So that's the shared thing. So many organizations can participate in. Distributed, there are many replicas of the blockchain database. Now, with your hundred or so many people, now you have that information that Ademar and myself have a agreement. So there's nothing that Ademar or me can say there is no agreement. This is, in terms of um, security, this is what we call non-repudiation. And the ledger, it itself, the database is append, only so it's immutable record of every transaction that occurs. So it has very, very high potential in terms of um, um, in terms of usage. McKinsey has done a, a good effort in um, in setting up several 
categories for for blockchain and they they create they created two main areas the record keeping of static information and registry uh, of tradable information basically these are the six groups that we have that we can use and i've at the end i have some real world example of applications i will come back to that later on as well so static registry so th things like managing registry of asset ownership and um, there's a um, examples are about land titles um, there are western type countries who have written everything uh, about the land ownership in a so-called cadaster however there are many big countries uh, who have no uh, registry who owns a piece of land and sometimes uh, people say this is my land while somebody else claims ownership as well supply chain is a very important thing the origin of something so where does it really come from so there's a huge um, problem with the diamond industry the so-called blood diamonds where they really come from so the supply chain can be stored in a static registry when we're talking about identity we have something called legal identity which is probably your passport and we have something called a um, digital identity however there are many different types of digital identity identity so you have an identity with uh, facebook maybe you have with whatsapp or any other so you have multiple then identity identity on the um, on your uh, on your uh, it systems and that should be uh, able to store that in a um, in a blockchain smart contracts um, things like insurance claims paid payouts dynamic registry uh, in terms of um, exchanging uh, physical or digital uh, assets uh, like a um, 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 an auction or something like that and of course the uh, payment infrastructure that we have know from um, from bitcoin the last category is verifiable data um, things like uh, event tickets and protection of uh, intellectual property there's you there's a very neat application in terms of um, uh, protecting intellectual property in, in the music business. So I'm going to take you for a somewhat deeper example. You may be aware of something that's called remittance. Remittance is the fact that money is transferred either between uh, direct uh, banks or um, via um, two banks who are not directly connected to each other. These cross-border money transfers, they are usually at a high cost. They are constantly changing because of exchange rates and they are liable to, uh, to fraud. And you probably 80% of organizations report being targets of attempted payments fraud attacks over the um, in in 2009. So when we're talking about um, money transfers, um, banks uh, or organizations like uh, or like SWIFT are working together with um, with banks to to transfer money. Consider the following um, the following example. Um, there are about almost two billion people, 1.7 billion people in the world that don't have a bank account. So how would they get money if they don't have a bank account? Usually, if you look at the the map on uh, on, on when you look to this map. You will see 
that the, the having the bank account is uh, um, um, heavily or, or not having a bank account is is heavily located in let's say the um, African continent and the southeast uh, continent. So in total, this is about um, two million. Uh, 1.7 billion people who don't have a bank are don't have a bank account. Also, one of the things is that many of these countries are having money sent by people who work outside the countries to to support their families. So, part of the people working in, for instance, America or Western Europe, they send money back to the people in India or whatever country you, you're mentioning, by the way, they don't have a bank. So sending money back home is a very, very cumbersome task. So what they need to do is they need to go to various organizations. And the, the, back, the back side of it is that they have to pay a lot of money. Consider the other thing. And that's over here. And, and now I'm taking you to, um, to how many people actually own a, a smartphone. And you see over here that the countries like Brazil or India or China, uh, 65 to 89% uh, do have a smartphone. So maybe you could just you know, create a blockchain application that is um, beneficial to create to transfer money in a uh, cross-border uh, economy it is nearly instant so i can i can take my smartphone and use a blockchain application and say uh, I, I transfer money over to whatever. It's nearly instant. It, it is low cost. It is, and by the way, it's for 1.7 billion people. It's added value. Cryptocurrencies they, um, they usually use are equal, equivalents of the normal money that they use in that country. So it's, it's safe as well. Well, as a last item, I'm taking you to um, some interesting, uh, in interesting graph, and I just need to switch over to my internet browser. Let me see where I have it over here. So probably you can see my internet browser just now, and this is a very interesting thing on how you can let's say, um, see how many organizations, how many sectors can benefit from actually um, implementing blockchain um, as a part of their business. So we, we are now facing a strong healthcare problem. So with the COVID-19, um, I could think that we, probably use uh, a blockchain application in order to, to make sure that we, we can track people, uh, we can uh, make sure that everybody is, uh, is helping uh, to overcome the problems that we currently have. I'm taking one or two um, elements. Maybe you are from the public sector. In the public sector over here, you see something like e-voting. Well, voting is something that is a um, is a part of a, de a democracy. If you look at Estonia, one of the Baltic countries, they completely completely have um, automated their voting system uh, for new governments or uh, other voting applications that they use. Within a very small, um, very small time frame, they are able to, 
to create a voting system and they are able to have the end result already there. Also over here, I have the identity system. Should you, exactly in, uh, in, um, in Estonia, they have a, a digital identity based on blockchain and they are very successful with it. When I go to property, you will see things like land registry as a interesting uh, interesting use case for uh, for blockchain but also um, in technology and media you will see some interesting elements in digital identity management and in internet of things so there is a issue with um, security uh, with Internet of Things because there are so many different uh, applications and, and you can can think of um, self-driving cars which are practically full with Internet of Things uh, sensors that are uh, used uh, in various ways to monitor the car uh, and it should be safe as well. So these are a few items these are a few use cases um, but when you look at the um, when you look at just going over here again when you look at the possible use cases for for uh, blockchain you will see there are hundreds hundreds of maybe uh, use cases that you never thought of and maybe there will be hundreds and hundreds of use cases in in the future that we can um, we can think of. One of the interesting use cases I want to end with is um, what I just remember is the the blood def, uh, uh, distribution. Blood as a very um, interesting thing, a life saver thing in many countries. Uh, you need to have the origin of the blood. You need to know when it was uh, created. You need to know what it, uh, what kind of what kind of um, 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 things that have done with the blood, whether they they created plasma or whatsoever. So the 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 the, um, the supply chain of blood is life threatening or life-saving in some cases. Just put it into a blockchain. But a blockchain is by default secure. A blockchain is by default immutable. A blockchain is by default um, non-deniable and non-repudiation. A blockchain is by default encrypted. So basically we see a lot of applications that would be an interesting, interesting um, use case for the utilization of blockchain. I hope you um, have enjoyed this session. Um, I will give um, Ademar the um, microphone again uh, and would be interested to answer any questions if they are. Thank you very much, Apple. Uh, I'm going to switch to my screen at this point of time. Uh -huh. Okay, great. So uh, before we move forward for the questions and answers, so uh, I would like to give you uh, an, uh, an announcement. Whilst you can drop your message by using the tab questions from the GoToWebinar that I'm going to address to Apple. Okay, but if you would like to know more about blockchain, our content partner, Van Haren Publisher, that is one of the sponsors of this webinar, they are offering two different promotions for you. One uh, promotion is for the accredited training organizations from Axing and also the trainers that are accredited. If you'd like to download free of charge the full courseware for the Blockchain Foundation course, you are going to receive an email 
from us, from Exim, with the details, with the link, and also with the code that you are going to, to use to make the download free of charge. It is not available over here because we already know from all the attendees who are ATOS and trainers and who are candidates. However, if you are a candidate or a professional that would like to read more about blockchain or to do some self-study and apply for the exam certification, you can buy the um, official book from the Blockchain Foundation examination that is published by Van Haren, that is called Introduction to Blockchain Technology. You can enjoy a discount of 50% on the ebook version. You can see the details of this discount on my screen uh, that I'm, I'm showing to you. It's located on the right side. Over there, you can see the discount code, the valid date, and the ebook link. But, however, I know that you cannot copy and paste this information because this is being shown to your screen. You are going to also receive an email with all these details on Monday, together with the uh, uh, recorded webinar. So no need to worry or to be hurried to get the notes. I just would like to announce this uh, incredible discounts and promotions that Van Haring is providing to all the attendees. So thank you very much, Van Haring. Thank you very much, Maritz for the kindness uh, offer that you did for the attendees of this webinar. And also, uh, we already have uh, two previous webinars that were recorded and they are available. You can watch these previous webinars if you'd like to. The first one's about breaking to blockchain, a panel discussion. I was together with Patrick uh, Hansen and Tiana Lawrence that are, uh, she is the book author from the official literature of the Blockchain Foundation uh, book. And uh, we addressed many questions and it was really an interactive session. So I would uh, encourage you to watch this previous webinar and also the blockchain, the perfect storm that was done, I think two, three months ago. Uh, I think it was just a little bit before uh, everything happened in the world. So it's worth you to watch as well because it's a really inter an interesting topic. So no further ado. So now I'm going to stop uh, sharing my screen because I need to read the questions. So at this point of time, I would like to say thank you to Apple already. Uh, but guys, bear with us because I'm going to start the questions and answers, okay? So uh, Apple, just one second that I'm switching my screen to get the questions, okay? Okay, great. So first question, Apple. Can transactions in the block in blockchain be changed? No. But can you provide like a, a little bit more like a detail about why this cannot be changed? What happens inside a blockchain somehow? Like a, in yeah. few words that I, doesn't I, allow I, people to change anything. Yeah, I uh, definitely uh, I did on purpose a very short answer. Um, the blockchain, okay. yeah, so no is the, the final answer, uh, and how it makes, um, you cannot change a transaction. So you can undo a transaction by doing a new transaction. So there is no way, that's the, the fact that a blockchain is immutable, there is no way that you can change the blockchain. So if you are if you say the transaction was faulty or was for whatever reason not uh, not done correctly, you have to reverse it by doing a negative transaction. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. So it's it's about the same as when you send an invoice to to a customer. If I send an invoice to a customer and the customer says the invoice is wrong or the invoice, it, it has some, uh, we didn't, it, it, does, it doesn't have the information that uh, with the correct whatever number or whatsoever. I cannot change the, the invoice by sending a new invoice. I have to send a credit invoice and then a new invoice. So it's basically the same. Clear, very clear. Yeah. Then there is another question. I read about Merkle tree and Merkle root. May yeah. I know what are they? 
it it will be handled uh, in the um, in the um, in the blockchain foundation training. It is basically a, um, a, a way how consensus is being uh, established between uh, part two parties in the blockchain. So the Merkle tree is is a kind of cons consensus mechanism. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And then the next question that we have is in the use case examples, I don't see education and certification. Can you imagine use cases in this domain? Uh, I didn't understand the question quite well. Can you repeat it, please? Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when you were providing some case examples, some case studies about yeah. the usage of blockchain for some sectors, education mm -hmm. and professional certifications were not part of the, the examples. Uh, yeah. Do you see any, uh, anyhow, blockchain can be used in this sector as well? Yes. Um, I took the information that was uh, available from the report by McKinsey, and they um, they put uh, they didn't put education in it. But I can envision of some examples of use cases in education as well. So what one thing would be, for instance, um, maybe like for Exxon as well, you you can store the uh, certif certificates in a uh, in a blockchain. So nobody can actually, uh, you can store the certificates as a smart contract in a blockchain. So nobody can tamper with the, uh, the certificates or the exam papers or whatsoever because they are stored in a blockchain. Um, other things that might be for, for education, for instance, um, tracking person, um, their learning path. So like a, a supply chain type of thing, you, you can actually put that into a, into a blockchain as well. Um, another thing that comes up in my mind is the way that, for instance, people in, um, in, in, a, in a educational environment, they, um, they need to, um, they, they need to, um, to do uh, apprenticeships. And when they do so, um, they can, for instance, uh, use blockchain uh, in terms of, uh, uh, again, a smart contract or in terms of supply chain uh, when they are uh, in the, uh, in the, in the, um, 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 when they're working off, uh, off, 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 off site. Yes, I have to think about a, a few more, but it's, uh, 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 just out of top of my head, uh, probably these are uh, very interesting. Um, I challenge the audience to come with and to, to read the books uh, by Tiana, for instance, uh, uh, but also uh, to attend the training because one, one part of the training is discovering what blockchain can be for your organization. Yeah, that's very true. I read the book already and it's a really interesting book. And believe me, I'm a person that I didn't know anything about block what blockchain is. Now I have like a better vision about this. Yeah. yeah so I, I truly agree with you. So, well, in the beginning, I, in, in, yes, sorry please. to interrupt. In the beginning of the, when I first heard about blockchain some six, seven years ago, I had something like cold water fear. You, you know that what it means. And probably it said, uh, uh, I pushed it away and said, "Okay, this is this is not something for me." However, the world changes with a, with, with a very great pace, and uh, I think blockchain is going to be one of the game changers within. Now uh, we now live in in 2020, but within five years, when we re, when we will be playing this 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 presentation again, um, you will probably will see that a, a lot of things have already come through. Definitely, that's very true. Then uh, I'm going to move forward um, to the last question. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, do you see uh, a platform that is being the most used blockchain platform by companies or is this something like a kind of generic 
like uh, organizations are using like a different technologies for uh, for the blockchain purpose. Is there a sort of pattern or the best one or something like this? Yeah, that heavily depends on the the, the business question. Um, do you want to? Um, if you want to do some programming yourself, uh, as I said, this is not going to be a technical presentation. If you want to do some programming yourself, uh, Amazon, uh, Azure, and all these cloud providers or uh, SaaS uh, providers, they also have blockchain uh, capabilities within their, their um, um, offerings. One that is very, um, um, very much used in terms of smart contracts. And that's, that's what I said, you, you have to go first, you're not going to the, let's say the, the tool as such, but you go first back to what you really want to achieve. So uh, uh, in the book from Tiana, she gives also a lot of examples for several platforms where you can do, for instance, smart contracts or identity or uh, uh, the supply chain uh, uh, um, um, blockchain. So basically, the, the question um, I would like to be answering or is what is what you want to do with the blockchain and then choose a platform that is capable of using uh, and utilizing um, that, that business information into a blockchain rather than put it if vice versa. Uh, what I said, Amazon and Azure, they have a, uh, a platform where you can program blockchain applications, uh, but it will be um, a, a blockchain program that you create yourself. However, when you go to for smart contracts, uh, I would say Ethereum is a very good one, but there are more. So basically uh, I would rephrase the question, what is your goal, what you want to do and select the, the blockchain platform with with the goal rather than uh, try to say we go to to program on an Azure or a, or on an Amazon environment. Oh, thank you very much for the the session, Apple. So mm -hmm. for now, I would like to say also thank you very much for all the attendees that were together with us that stayed uh, during the a whole session. Again, I'd like to say thank you for Accent to provide this webinar and also for Van Harding to also sponsor this webinar and make incredible offers. Just a final reminder that on Monday you are going to receive the email with all the details about how to download the courseware for the ATOS and trainers and how to purchase your ebook uh, with 50% of discount. Again, Apple, thank you very much for this incredible webinar. I hope we can be together again for future webinars. So have a Thank nice you. weekend to everybody and to you as well, Apple. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.